first every important event in our lives. We begin by calling on the aid, the assistance, and the guidance of the Almighty. So I begin in the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful. I bear witness that regardless of land, label, or language, that there is but one God. And I bear witness that Muhammad, that Abraham, that Moses, and that Jesus and others are the servants of God. It is in these righteous names I am honored to greet all of you. Extending the greeting words of peace, we say it in the Arabic language, Assalamu alaikum. It is certainly, as always, my privilege. I'm certainly grateful to the family of the man whose life we celebrate today, our brother Oscar Grant III, to his mother, Mother Wanda, my sister, to all of her brothers, Oscar's uncles, my brothers, to our mother, who's sitting here to the side, the mother of Wanda, and of course to Sister Tatiana. Can we give this wonderful family a big round of applause for stepping out and moving forward to bring us together on such a beautiful day. This is the first day of 2017. And they tell me that CNN broadcaster Don Lemon last night had a little bit too much to drink. And when they caught him on an open mic, he said that 2016 was terrible. And perhaps in his mind and in his heart, along with the tequila he had, multiple shots of on his way to the midnight celebration, that he was greatly concerned and gravely concerned about the president-elect of the United States of America and what his intentions may be for the coming year. One of the things that we do know is that in 2009, when we gathered at the Olivet Institutional Missionary Baptist Church, before we learned of the horrific murder of our brother and son, Oscar Grant III, groups of men, predominantly black and Latino, decided that we would have a men-only meeting to do what is now being asked about 10,000 fearless men to bring peace and change into our communities. And on that morning of January the 3rd, we gathered. On that morning of January the 3rd, we met. But on that morning of January the 3rd, we had not yet been introduced to the video footage of the murder of our brother, our son, and our friend, Brother Oscar Grant. While driving home that evening, we had met to speak to the issues that Mr. Trump have already said he's opposed to. We met to talk about stop and frisk and police profiling. We met to talk about gentrification, which have changed the face of Oakland and have removed the face of San Francisco if those faces were black. We met because black lives clearly did not matter in Northern California, nor did it seem to matter in many other parts of our country. We met because our schools were, our schools were failing our children and our children were failing in schools. We met because incarceration rates for black men had found themselves at an all-time high, and so we were meeting. Little did we know that while we were meeting, Katarina Vargas had captured a videotape of the murder of Brother Oscar. And that night, that tape reached KTVU television. And while driving home from our desire to do something of good for the community, my phone rang. And in fact, it began to ring repeatedly with questions from persons wanting to know, had I seen the videotape of what happened right here at Fruitvale BART Station? Brother Christopher, my brother in San Francisco, our minister and friend, called me and said to me, had I seen the video? My answer, not yet. He asked me to call him once I saw it. And when we spoke, he raised some necessary questions. He raised the question as to whether or not 
there was black leaders in Oakland who cared. He wanted to know, isn't there a group that you are a member of there in Oakland called the Black Elected Officials and Faith-Based Leaders? What position have they taken on the murder of Oscar Grant? We're here with our now council president from West Oakland. And we wanted to know right away before she was in office, if you are an elected office, what, if anything, do you intend to do about the murder of Oscar Grant? Several days later, we met at what became the host church of the weekly town hall meetings at the Olivet Institutional Missionary Baptist Church. And there we met with members of the council members of the county supervisors, members of the clergy, and members of the community wanting to know what could be done. Since we're looking at videotape murder, is anybody willing to do anything, anywhere, in the demand for justice? Well, while meeting, our council person, Desley Brooks, picked up her cell phone and said, well, we can find out right now. And there's benefit to being in an elected office. She had the phone number of the district attorney and she called the district attorney, former district attorney, thanks to you, you missed that. Former district attorney, Tom Orloff, thanks to you. Because when he hesitated on bringing charges against Johannes Meserly for the murder of Oscar Grant, the community gave him three solutions to his problem. That he should retire, that he should resign, or that he should face a recall effort from the voters of Alameda County. And before we could complete the recall application, Tom Orloff resigned. He called it retire. Well, this is only to say and to share when we learned of the horrific killing of our brother, we knew right away that we had to do something out of respect for his life. It seems that nearly every week I meet someone who's lost a loved one at the hand of law enforcement unnecessarily and we have not yet received justice. I just spoke with a mother a few moments ago whose son, Miss Neal, whose son was taken by OPD and they began to lie on the facts of the matter almost immediately. To our left is Mother Gwen Woods, the mother of our brother Mario Woods in San Francisco. Again, videotape. An execution shot over 20 times for doing nothing but walking while black with dignity. So as we began to organize, of course, we met the wonderful family and learned the many stories of Oscar, of his friends, of his family. And as we traveled the country in search of justice, you have to know that so many cases presented themselves, it would almost boggle the mind. In the last year, over a thousand people have been slain at the hand of law enforcement and nearly a thousand times it is called justifiable homicide. The names are in such great number, we couldn't give justice to all of them. But I want you to say with me, I am Oscar Grant. I am Oscar Grant. I am Oscar Grant. I am James Rivera Jr. I am James Rivera Jr. I am James Rivera Jr. I am Mario Woods. I am Mario Woods. 
I am Mario Woods. I am Mario Woods. I am Mario Romero. I am Mario Romero. I am Mario Romero. I am Alex Nieto. I am Alex Nieto. I am Alex Nieto. I am Raheem Brown. I am Raheem Brown. I am Raheem Brown. I am Andy Lopez. I am Andy Lopez. I am Andy Lopez. I am Derek Jones. I am Derek Jones. I am Derek Jones. Mother Neil, come on up here with me. There are so many names. Come on up. Give us your son's name so that we can say it loud because we're for justice and we're proud. Diallo Neal. I am Diallo Neal. I am Diallo Neal. I am Diallo Neal. Thank you, Mother. Dear family, these names are really the names among many of the martyrs of our people. Now, while history may not record them the way history has recorded our brother, the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., while history may not have recorded them the way history will record forever the great minister Malcolm X, while history may not record them the way history certainly would record the great mega efforts. In reality, they are every bit as much as great, as significant, and as important as those whose lives are respected in the writings of history, but you and I have just declared who we are. And in declaring who we are, we're declaring that these whose names we've called what we should know that their life and their loss were no accidents. And while we may feel as if they left before time, quite frankly, we all leave on God's time. Will we agree with that? Yes, sir. So whether we like the results or we dislike them, whatever happens, we owe those happenings to the will of God. It is written in the Holy Quran as I prepare to close. We speak not of those who are slain in Allah's way as dead. Nay, they are alive, but you perceive them not. And of course, the Bible teaches us that all things work for good. For those who love God, all things work for good. For those that live in God, all things works for good. For those who are engaged in the work of God, so long as we understand that we are also called according to his purposes. For what purpose did God allow this enemy to take the lives of our people before we could calculate their time. Dear family, I close with this. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad, who's represented today by the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, teaches us that justice is the weapon that God would use in the day of judgment. The government hates that we should stand on the principle of justice. For justice is an irreversible, immutable principle of God, regardless to whether you call yourself 
Christian, Muslim, or Jew, justice is justice. Justice is the eventual working out, the correcting of wrongs so that rights might be present. And when we went to Los Angeles for verdict day, Minister Farrakhan told me that if there's a not guilty verdict for Johannes Meserly, he said, brother, I want you to give them warning from God. Warn them that God's justice cannot be mocked forever. Warn them that if they're concerned about the feats of nature that have cost America billions and billions of dollars from floods, from fires, from earthquakes, you warn them, brother, from me, that God is not pleased with America and dear family. You should know that when you stand with right and when you stand for justice, that God is pleased with you. So isn't it wonderful to be pleasing to Allah that when the day of judgment comes, that we don't have to worry about floating up or going down, but we have to concern ourselves with walking into our society that involves a life of freedom, justice, peace, equality, and love. And if we live in a world of freedom, justice, uh, equality, and love, then the world that we are in, it would actually be called the hereafter. It'd be called what? It would be called the hereafter. Not after you're dead, but here after the wicked have been destroyed. That's the hereafter that we look for. Now the only ones that don't like that kind of hereafter are the wicked ones. Because warning to the wicked ones. Your day of ruling and wickedness has already ended. Do you know how we know that it has already ended? Because look at us. You're now looking at the new America. Look around you. White supremacy is a myth. And if anyone thinks that they can rule this world further simply by the whiteness of your skin, then look at us again. Look at you. The day of the rule of white supremacy that justifies the murder of the darker peoples of the earth is over. In fact about it, those of the darker people of the earth, you and I are not minorities. Can I say that again? We are not minorities. And in a political democracy, they like that we should think ourselves to be minority so that we would subject ourselves to the unjust rule of those that have ruled with a wicked hand. These days of your rule with a wicked hand are over. The only thing that's needed for us to remove them from such rule is that we unite. This was the value of our weekly town hall meetings. We were able to pull us together from every walk of life, not to promote our own personal agendas, but we gathered from every walk of life. So when we look at the murder of Oscar Grant, we could look at those in authority and declare with the force of our unity, never again. Never again should we have to face you under this kind of condition without the power to make the change that we have. The power is in our hands if we will only get united and stay united. For our unity is a weapon that sends shockwaves all over the world in closing. The very first time I came to the Bay Area to see the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan speak was at a little gymnasium in San Francisco called the Ella Hill Hutch 
Community Center. Just a few weeks ahead of the Loma Prieta earthquake, and some of you may recall being there. And when he addressed that audience of about a thousand people on that day, he said of our unity in this area, that a movement would come up from this area that could send shock waves from around the world. Do you know that when they moved Oscar uh, Grant's murder trial to LA, they were just running from a movement? We had a meeting after Oscar's friends were harassed in the courtroom at the preliminary hearings with Sheriff Ahern. What's his name? Sheriff Ahern, what's his name? I think he's still a sheriff. And we sat down with him, and when they were looking at where this trial would be held, that man told us to our faces. He pointed at Dave and a few others. They were out protesting in front of Alameda County Courthouse. And he said, this is the worst thing that had ever happened to me. Now I'm looking at the sheriff in his high office across the street from the courthouse sitting in a leather chair with his chair leaned back and he's looking at a half a dozen people with a sign in their hand that says jail killer cops. And he declared that this was the worst thing that had ever happened to him. In other words, he was afraid that a movement was being birthed to life right in the midst of the people. And do you know who he sounded like to me? He sounded like Herod, who feared the birth of Jesus. He sounded like Pharaoh, who feared the birth of Moses. He sounded like Peroni and Mezzali, that feared the life of Oscar Grant. And he sounded like those cops that feared our sons and our daughters, not because of what we have done, but they fear our sons and daughters because of the power that we represent in the world. We are not minorities. When we are united, we are the world's majority. So may Allah bless and keep us. Let's continue to organize. Somebody said to me, we need some Oakland Town Hall meetings again. I think you're right. Because this station still has the wrong name. For this station, we know it to be the Oscar Grant Memorial Fruitvale Station. And it would seem that those in authority at BART, they know what the demand is, but they have not yet heard it with the backing of your and my unity and the force of our unified voices. So this year, let us not let another month go by where we give name to a station that is not its rightful name. We met with the Latino leaders of this community and they agreed that this station should forever be changed to the Oscar Grant Memorial Fruitvale Station. And while we have our council president, little righteous pressure, ma'am. I don't know why this is 35th Avenue. This should be Oscar Grant the Third Avenue or Street. Can we start that work? Praise, we got our council president here. It's been moved, do I have a second? All that agree that we should change the name of this station to Fruitvale, to Oscar Grant Memorial Station Signified by saying, I, I. all of those that oppose, run. <laughs> and all those that agree that this should be Oscar Grant the third way, drive, or street, signified by saying, I, I, and all those that oppose, run. Well, family, I believe the eyes have it. Our time has come. May Allah bless and keep you. Thank you for listening as I greet you in peace. Assalamu alaikum.